Well, I made a wave. I made a patch with the wavetable I made in the last tutorial, and it actually doesn't sound like complete shit. So there's that. I guess that's proof you can actually make decent sounds with the wavetable editor from scratch. Anyway, this is going to be a shorter tutorial because I'm just showing you what you can do with samples in the wavetable editor. So you can actually take samples and use them to create wavetables. Um, just have to keep in mind you can only use wave files. Like I tried loading an AUG file and it didn't work. So if you click on convert sample, you'll be taken to the file explorer and you'll be able to look through your computer to find whatever sounds you want to turn into a wavetable. Once you've got your sound loaded up, you'll be able to pick two points. You'll have two keyframes automatically made for you and you can select the start point by moving the source values around for both ones. Um, it does detect the pitch for you, but sometimes you may have to adjust it yourself. I don't know if it's going to sound very good because I've got so much sound, so I'll just I'll just focus in on this one. Harmer, right here. Just him saying Harmer. So yeah, there's that. Um, it detected the pitch as E3 for me. If I go higher or lower, it's going to sound weirder most of the time, but sometimes it doesn't get the right octave, which is usually the problem. Um, usually it gets the notes right, but the octave can be off sometimes, so that would be the number right after the letter. So if I go with E2, it sounds just a tiny bit different. If I go with E4, actually sounds it actually sounds all right there too I, I don't know maybe I did something wrong usually when I change the octave it sounds like shit um, you can go with a as always kilohertz people like giving you the mix button to mix in whatever wasn't there before but I didn't have anything there before so um, besides <laughs> or I guess I had the wavetable I made so I, I could just say, I don't want this wavetable at the end, and just say, all right, the old wavetable is going to be at the end. If I bring the mix down to zero, I won't have my imported sample at all. It will fade in for the beginning and fade out for the end. And now the next thing you need to look at is the phase alignment, because usually this doesn't have much of an impact on the sound, but it can make the wave look a bit f fucky sometimes you know just a little bit fucky um if if you're if you don't have a lot of phase movement in your sound it's probably best just to go with lock all but correlate usually works pretty well lock fundamental uh if i just bring this up to zero it makes the waveform go really weird and if i go with lock all that's the one i went with earlier None it tends to be pretty messy. Just keep that in mind. Um, lock fundamental and none I rarely, rarely use. Usually it's either correlate or lock all. And uh, I guess I could make this full screen, yeah. Another thing you can do is pitch bend. So if I just make this not full screen and make it full screen again, let's say at the end of the wavetable, I want my my pitch to go way up so I'll just say 24 semitones I think the effect it has most often is just to make sounds weird but sometimes it does resemble kind of a formant shift there's too many effects on here to be able to tell what it actually does and I have effects on I have effects on the mixer track as well very cool. Right now it just sounds like crap, you know. Um, 
You know what I'm saying? But I believe that's pretty much it when it comes to converting samples. It is pretty much like the rest of the wavetable editor, not that complicated once you get to know how it works.